I think tonight here in Lachray was a really successful night with really good engagement, good questions back up from the crowd. And I think it shows the appetite that people have to learn about producer organisations and how the producer organisation can benefit them. Certainly from an Irish beef producer's perspective, we outlined what we consider to be our strengths in terms of the rules we've implemented, in terms of how we have our structures put together, and the latitude that farmers have to choose um, whether they want to sell their cattle through us or not. Um, our, one of our key objectives is that farmers get paid more for their beef, and that pretty much um, sums up what we're trying to achieve as a, as a producer organisation. We do have some auxiliary things in the background that will help them from a knowledge transfer perspective, but ultimately the key thing for farmers is how much am I getting paid for my beef? That's the question that they've asked time and time again. No, in a, in a word I will say no, they're not engaging. Um, we've contacted the main processors um, throughout the country. We've tried to establish lines of communication. Um, some have simply not replied. Some have been somewhat curt in their responses. And we would try to find out who should we be talking to to um, negotiate price for our members. Um, with the exception of Keypack, um, who are the only people that have actually said that they will sit and meet with us, we've had almost no engagement from the others, which from my perspective is quite disappointing. The only way we can tackle that is with numbers. We have some challenging um, circumstances at the moment in terms of um, the kill of cattle is typically high this time of the year. But we're confident that's going to change. Um, the number of people that are actually feeding cattle to for finish at the moment, um, our members are telling us that they're simply not because the returns aren't there. And they're simply holding out to get the organisation up and running and therefore get us in a much stronger position on their behalf to negotiate price for them. The fundamental information that they need or the real basic stuff is their name, their address, their herd number, contact information such as their phone number or their email. After that they're asked a series of three questions. One of the most important questions there is that are they a member of a different producer organisation? Um, you're only allowed through the legislation to be a member of one at a time. Um, from our perspective under Irish Beef Producers there is um, a three month notice period if you wish to leave after you join but membership is free so you can join at any time provided that you're not a member of another PO. Critical mass needs to be achieved in terms of either number of members or number of stock that's traded through the PO. Um, without that critical mass we won't be in a strong enough position to claw back some of that power back from the processors. If they don't treat us um, with a level of respect that is driven by numbers and it's a numbers game um, we're going to continue to struggle, um, as will any farmer that tries to sell cattle individually. We will be no different as a producer organisation. We have to have numbers of farmers behind us and then their corresponding numbers of stock to force the process to engage more than they have done to date. Whilst it mightn't be obvious from the outside looking in, I can assure you that the amount of work that Beef Plan have been doing has been phenomenal in the background. Um, We've paid particular attention to the injunctions that are remaining on the two individuals from C&D Foods. Um, we've been very active in the background contacting a significant number of political figures to make sure that those stories, that the story of those two people are brought to the fore to make sure those injunctions are raised. Um, my understanding is that C&D are the last remaining injunctions that have not yet had letters of discontinuance issued. And that's a problem, certainly, that needs to be addressed at the most senior level in the government at this stage. From my perspective, it is absolutely critically important that that task force is held to account to deliver on what was agreed at the previous talks with the Meat Minister Ireland, facilitated by Minister Creed and the DFM. Without that task force sitting, we are um, maintaining the status quo which, from my perspective, suits the factories down to the ground. We are the people that are trying to effect change. The task force is the form in which that change will be effected. And if that doesn't sit, we're going nowhere. It is critically important that task force gets up and running. One of the things that we did agree with Minister Creed as past part of the talks we had with his department is that we would use the task force to air our concerns as a first port of call. Um, if those concerns are not addressed satisfactorily from our perspective, there's nothing to stop us from going back and protesting again, either outside of the meat processors or, for that matter, outside the retail distribution centres, which we also have done to somewhat of a smaller scale in the past. If we don't get or feel that we're being listened to, we will protest. And that's what we have done from the first time we protested outside of um, Back Western about the TB form. We've done a second protest outside the Dáil to get recognition as a 
legitimate farm organisation. People are very much aware of the protests that happened during the summer and it's within our gift and within our right to protest and we will use that um, to our advantage if we feel that we have to. Okay, so I think it's great, I really do, that we've had more opportunities, we've more markets opening up, or at least we have facilities that can produce or can supply product into those markets. For me, the measure of success is not the number of plants that's approved. For me, the measure of success of Board B and these initiatives is that farmers get paid more for their produce. So that if we continue to open up markets, and the only people that don't benefit from that are the primary producer, I have a fundamental problem with that. For me, the measure of success is how sustainable beef farming is in Ireland. If it's not sustainable, they can open up all the markets in the world and it won't make a difference because there'll be no one to supply beef.